Hi, and welcome back, Imanshu. We did uh, the first uh, session on the Spark optimization, and now uh, Imanshu is back to walk us through the Delta Lake optimization. Hey, Yusuf. Thanks a lot again for inv inviting me for this uh, second video in the series of optimization videos. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna share my screen. Just give me one sec. So as Yusuf has said, like we have already done one video that was uh, dedicated to Spark optimization and where we walked through this optimization guide and different sections uh, regarding Spark. And today we are gonna focus on Delta Lake optimization. So let's uh, dive right into. So like, as you can see in this guide, we have different sections. So let's start with uh, Delta Lake. Uh, so we start with a quick introduction of Delta Lake, why it's like, uh, uh, like why Databricks uh, recommends to use uh, Delta Lake as a format, given the different you know, features uh, like acid trans transactions, uh, time travel, all those things which are, which are missing from different uh, like older formats like Parquet or ORC. Um, and then uh, we have a <clears throat> section on how you can uh, basically optimize the file layout. Basically, Delta is just <clears throat> behind the scene, it's Parquet uh, files. And on top of that, we kind of add transaction logs to give you that uh, acid transaction guarantee. So we still need to make sure that our file layout is optimized to have a you know very uh, stable uh, query performance over time. So for that, like we are explaining different techniques to bin pack uh, smaller file files into bigger files using optimize command or using you know auto optimize where uh, you can just set up some knobs and uh, you know uh, databricks and spark will automatically kind of compact your smaller file into bigger files uh, you know on the on the go uh, we also talk about z ordering which is like a way of indexing your data so that uh, if you use uh, particular columns uh, many times, uh, or let's say uh, more often in queries, uh, these queries can run faster because your data will be physically sorted uh, using those those columns, uh, using z-ordering. Uh, and again, like we explain uh, which kind of columns you should be using for z-ordering, like uh, it should be more like a high cardinality columns, like a customer ID or order ID uh, to use for z-ordering. We have a section on partitioning. Obviously, Databricks recommends like not to partition tables which are smaller than one terabyte, uh, because in that case you can take advantage of uh, you know ingestion time clustering. Uh, uh, again, and we have a few other uh, new technologies coming up like liquid clustering, which probably will cover in the next version of this book. Uh, but yeah, if you have to partition, again we are giving some guidelines like you should be choosing columns which are low cardinality columns like you know date or year rather than choosing. Uh, columns like customer ID. Otherwise, you will end up like with very small partitions with very small files, and that's that's a problem for sure. And if you have to also kind of tweak the file size, uh, you can use this parameter. And uh, once you have set this parameter, uh, optimize or auto optimize uh, all of these uh, basically uh, bin compaction technologies or techniques will uh, respect the file that you have, uh, the size that you have set for your, for your table. I think, yeah, uh, Yusuf, any, any questions or? All no, the... I just wanted to add something that now sure, I, please I comment in, um, for the, uh, there is there is a Delta configuration you can add uh, to specify because before you could only specify the number of columns starting from the left to the right that yeah. you wanted to be uh, optimized. By default, it's 32. Now yeah. what you can do, you can add a delta configuration and you can just specify without having to reorder the columns, you can just specify the columns that you want, where you want to the optimize to have to take place. And now it's mm -hmm. much, much easier. I think it's available starting from the DBR. Uh, 14, not, 14, 14. 14? I think so, yes. Uh, I, I forgot, but it's 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 one it's on one of specific DBRs. I will make sure to add the link yeah. in the <clears throat> yeah. in the description of the, the recording. Yeah, so I think uh, like just just to add some more colors on that, what you said is saying like by default Delta collects statistics for first 32 columns. Uh, and when you Z order with one of these columns, like your data skipping becomes really effective because you have stats as well as your files are sorted. Uh, by this column, right? Uh, but in many cases, we don't need to have these 32 columns on which we need to collect stats because collecting stats is costly. So in that case, either like initially it was like not possible to choose particular columns. Now there is a new configuration where you can just specify the columns on which you want to collect the statistics. Basically this data will collect stats for you automatically, but you can choose those columns now, right? Yeah. 
Awesome. Uh, let's move on to Delta uh, data caching. So uh, here we talk about uh, Delta caching. So Delta uh, comes with this nice feature, uh, like the machines which have SSD drives on that. Uh, these drives can be used to cache your Delta tables automatically. Like you don't have to do anything as long as you have you are using the VMs uh, which are Delta accelerated or which have these SSD drives. Uh, Delta uh, cache automatically kind of uh, caches your 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 tables so that whenever you query the same table again, uh, it's going to be much faster. I've done some comparison here with Spark Cache because this question comes a lot, like whether to use Delta Cache, whether to use Spark Cache, and how to kind of pick and choose one of these two. So again, this section gives you some details about like when I should be going for Spark Cache. Like for example, if you have a data frame which you are writing multiple times in multiple things, so this is where you can take advantage of Spark Cache. Otherwise, in our experience, I think Delta Cache is much better in terms of performance. So yeah, I think we definitely recommend uh, going for Delta Cache over Spark Cache, apart from this uh, just one small uh, corner case. OK, uh, there's a section on Delta Merge. Yeah, that, that, this is very, very important section. <laughs> yes. So merge is basically an upsert operation where you can uh, insert and update and even delete uh, on a Delta table, right? Uh, this operation can be costly because behind the scene, it performs joins. Uh, there will be at least one join. Like let's say I have a subset of data I'm trying to merge into a target Delta table. So I need to join that subset with the target table to figure out uh, like uh, what are the files uh, which will be impacted because we, they have common you know keys, for example. Uh, so that's the join one. And if I find some matches, then I have to do a second join uh, that will kind of reconciliate, uh, re do the reconciliation between the, 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 the data frame that I'm trying to merge with the target table, right? So obviously join operations are costly and over time your table volume will grow and this, this operation will be uh, slower and slower. Now there, there are some certain ways to kind of uh, overcome uh, this challenge. First one would be file sizes, okay? So uh, like by default, when you run optimize, it goes for one gigabyte file size which works pretty well in many cases, but for merges, we don't recommend that because uh, even if one of the row matches inside one parquet file, that means you might have to, like you, you will end up writing the whole file again because there's one row that is changing, right? So that's a problem. Uh, so to overcome that, we recommend to tune the file size to much smaller value, uh, like for example, 64 MB, 32 MB, so that you have a lot less rewrite of data uh, when there's a match uh, during merge operation. Uh, similarly, uh, we need to like we need to narrow down the search space, search space, right? And how we can do that using data skipping, partition pruning. So in the merge condition, you can have like you have this on clause where you choose key uh, call, like table one, key one, uh, table two, key two to do the join. In this uh, condition, specified filters like if you are uh, you have partition table, specify the partitions. Uh, which are available in the subset of data that you are trying to merge. That will give you a nice partition pruning on the target table. Similarly, if your table is z-ordered on some, some columns and uh, pick the distinct values of these columns coming from this batch data frame that you are trying to merge and provide that distinct values as filters, that, that will give you a nice file pruning as well, right? Uh, similarly, as I said, merge is a join operation. So we talked about in the previous video video about Spark optimization. We, we, we touched upon broadcast join. So broadcast as much as possible, increase the threshold, uh, put the broadcast keyword uh, explicitly, right? Before your batch data frame that is being merged to your to your you know your target table, right? And lastly, like we have this low shuffle merge, which is a nice feature available on yeah. Databricks, uh, which is uh, I think already uh, turned on from 10.4. So yeah, use this this feature as well because this tries to kind of uh, like minimize the uh, the shuffle happening behind the scene, and obviously will give you more uh, uh, performance out of your merge operations. Yeah, and we can we can add we can add to actually, but uh, I think that it it's part of they are part of the it's, new a new release. It's the, the yeah. Yes. vectors Deletion vector yes absolutely and yes for, and yes. Uh, photon as well so for those who don't know photon photon is our i mean it's no longer a new one but it's uh, now it's part of the data bricks called uh, it's the vectorized engine that has been rewritten uh, which make the workloads uh, let's say run much faster and with the deletion yeah. vector is also it's a way way 
faster due to the new mechanism because I don't know if you know, but Parquet is immutable. And whenever you modify, so it's a new uh, file that is, uh, which will be rewritten, same thing when you delete. So now this operation is not done immediately, but we, talk, we mark them as deleted and the compaction or the rewrite will be done later, which tend to speed the process, specifically if you have the merge and this merge, you have updates and deletes. Absolutely, yes. And this is going to be in the refresh coming up in a couple of months for sure. Okay, and probably last section to quickly go through is uh, purging, data purging or data cleaning. So this is where we talk about vacuum. I think uh, people who are using Databricks, they definitely know this command. So vacuum is a way to uh, delete uh, older parquet files, which are not part of your, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say defined, uh, uh, like ver data version defined within the threshold. Uh, so when you run this command, these parquet files will be automatically deleted and it will basically clear up a lot of storage for you. So probably like one, like a couple of things to to take, like uh, uh, kind of uh, pay attention when you are doing uh, vacuums is basically the thresholds uh, of retention. By default, it's seven days. And one thing that you have to, to, to know is that you have a data retention, like this file retention, as well as, delta log retention, okay? Because you have parquet files and you have uh, delta log, like transaction logs. So these are two things, different things. And by default, their retention is different. Like uh, for files, we have seven days. For logs, we have 30 days. Uh, in our experience, it's better to align these values to the same value because in, otherwise you would have like log uh, going up to 30 days and data up to seven days. And that's a problem because uh, like in theory, you can time travel up to 30 days, but you don't have the files for that. So yeah, make sure that you are probably putting these value to the same, 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 these two configuration to the same value, for example, 15 days or 30 days, whatever you choose. But yeah, just just be uh, kind of uh, attentive of this this parameter. Other, other than that, it's a very simple command. Just uh, like, uh, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a maintenance job. You have to keep on running on, on, on daily basis or weekly basis uh, so that you don't accumulate too much uh, stale parquet files. And I think that's it, Yusuf. I don't think I wanted to add more on Delta, uh, Delta stuff. No, everything seems to be, I mean, that was very, very clear. And again, they will find more details on the, uh, on the guide you wrote with Prashant. Thank, Thank you, you, Matthew, and see you in the next session. Thank you.